Hi, I'm Jerry from PressureWasher.net. Sirocco Vacuums, Bulldog Pro Pressure Washers. We're going to talk about 12 volt pumps for a minute. Um, the, there's a couple of big problems that you guys have been having with 12 volt pumps. First one is the switches go bad. Switches go bad because they're not really made for as much power as you really want going across these things. Um, controlling a motor. The startup amps is huge on these motors and really punishing the pressure switch is really just about them wanting to sell you more switches. So here's the solution. We use a relay with 60 to 80 amp contacts as the control for the motor and all we're doing is turning on the, uh, the relay with the switch. So wiring it um, with a uh, control circuit fuse of only a a couple amps uh, to turn on our our, uh, our relay and then you'll have a fuse on your battery which we'll talk about in just a second which protects the motor for the full load not a big deal if your if your pump runs 18 amps you're going to use a 20 or 25 amp fuse on the on the on the um, on, on the battery <clears throat> so um, I can provide a circuit for wiring the relay. We've got a kit that you can buy that includes the diagram and a few minutes of coaching and the parts and accessories. It's, you can find it on, on my website. It's a, it's a great deal for making these pumps more reliable. So let me show you what we're doing with this. So we're using big heavy wire. Okay, this is an 18 amp motor. So we're gonna use this big heavy 10 gauge wire to feed this thing. And we're only going about six, seven, eight feet. Uh, if we were going farther, we, we would use even bigger wire. But we're gonna connect to a battery with stainless steel bolts and really well crimped, crimped connections. So we're gonna connect to the battery here, okay? With, uh, with, with really good connections onto your battery. Bad connections are bad delivery of power. We use sealed lead acid batteries, which do not breathe the fumes like a regular uh, automotive battery or a, or a deep disc, or a, a deep cycle marine battery. They still breathe those fumes. They still cause more problems than they're worth. Spend the extra 30% and get a sealed lead acid battery that'll live up to three or five times longer anyway. And you'll always have the perfect electrical supply, so your electrical stuff has a chance to be reliable. You can have the best electrical on the, in, the, in the world and have a piece of crap connection and destroy all that investment that you made. So start with the best battery, give it the best connections, use stainless steel hardware on your battery, okay? Put a fuse at the battery for, for protecting the entire circuit that you're, that you're supplying. Okay, um, this is a rain tight uh, ATO style fuse holder. We use ATO fuses because they are easy to get at the local auto parts store. Okay, but if you ever leave this open or if you got one without a cap, just remember to have it facing down so that rain can't get stuck in the doggone thing and give you bad connections inside here. You may have a good fuse and it looks all fine, and when you look inside, you find that it's all corroded and a piece of crap. Okay, if it gets corroded, just cut the thing off and put a new one on. Otherwise, uh, a little bit of grease on the contacts keeps them from corroding, facing it down so the rain can't stay in it. Rain, rain will bounce off. That makes them last longer. If you're lucky enough to find one like we provide with the rain cap, I'm still going to put grease on those contacts so that it's, so that it's moisture resistant. And then, of course, that makes it rain proof. So life is good. This is the power to whatever you're powering. We're gonna go through beefy connections to a beefy switch, all right? This one is gonna have the power switched on from the source. You can mount that conveniently. Make sure, again, you've got perfect connections and you've got wires laying where they're not gonna get chewed up, laying across sharp objects or anything and then your pump has its best chance to live a long time. If you're going to control the pump, then what we're gonna do is instead of breaking the circuit before the motor, what we're gonna do is break the circuit at the switch that controls the relay. So now we can put a remote control in here that'll turn this on and off. Hey, that remote control might be 
a, 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 a keyless remote fob and you're up on the roof trying to turn this thing on and off. You can do that running, th running this combination, okay, break the, break the power that goes to the control circuit. This is a little two amp fuse, low amps, so you can connect this other end here to a low amp switch of any kind. This happens to be a liquid level switch. So we're using this pump to fill a premix tank for soft washing, and when the level comes up, okay, the level level comes up, it opens the circuit and turns this thing off. When the when the float comes down, because you're using chemical out of your out of your holding tank, it turns this back on and refills your tank for you. This is simple controls, but you've got to understand how they work. Control your relay that turns on the main power. Use the a, a relay that has beefy contacts. And by the way, this little relay has substantial contacts in it. If you go and use one of those great big solenoid type relays that maybe has 100 amp contacts instead of 80, then um, guess what? Um, it takes so much power to run the solenoid that you're wasting power to the solenoid. You may be starving the power to your motor just because you picked the wrong relay. Use these little efficient automotive style relays and your entire electrical system can be more reliable. When you want answers, when you want things done right, go to pressurewasher.net.